you almost can't have missed it. GitHub is introducing Copilot, which is AI that's going to take over your job. Or is it? I sure hope not. I, for one, welcome our robot overlords. Now, first thing first, um, Copilot is in a technical preview right now. You can sign up. Um, there is a wait list. Full disclosure, I mean, I work at Microsoft, which is, of course, close with GitHub. So I don't know if my name got bumped up on the list because it showed up as an employee, but I signed up and got in pretty easily. I don't know how that is for the rest of the people, um, but you need to sign up. And when you do, you will get an email. You can install the extension. You can get cracking, which is really cool. But first, I want to show you some things here on the website. Um, so here you've got a couple of examples already. Um, this is in TypeScript and all the selected part here is what is done by Copilot. I think if I reload this, it will start the animation. Um, but what it will do is just say, you can either do like comments right here, um, or you can just start typing the function name and it will kind of infer from that what you are trying to do, which is really cool, really powerful. We will see that in a little bit. Um, you can also do the same thing for Go. So here you can see it actually, you can, you're just typing the function name and it will boom, do all the rest. Um, Python, Ruby, same thing. So really, really cool. This is powered by OpenAI if you want to know more all the details are here, um, extends your editor, speaks all the languages you love. Now that's kind of the thing that I want to touch upon because I'm going to show you with C Sharp and .NET, um, but the languages that works best at this time is Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, Ruby, and Go. Uh, but it can understand dozens of other languages, but the results might not be as good. Um, I think what they did is train the models with you know the languages that you see here. Um, but you know, the more you use it, that's how it works with AI. The more you use it, the more, the better it will get. So just start using it with .NET or the, the other languages that you love, and it will get better over time, hopefully. Um, now this is important. You are still the pilot, so is it going to take over our jobs? Probably not, uh, because this is the co-pilot. So it will just try to match all the things that you do. You have to provide it with the input, and it's not going to write your entire app for you. Don't worry. But it can help you with a lot of boilerplate code. It's much more than, for instance, um, IntelliCode, which is also the AI-powered IntelliSense that's inside of Visual Studio. We'll see that in a little bit. So here they say it's more than autocomplete. Um, it will understand what you're trying to do and boom, uh, add that to there. Um, skip the docs, stop searching for examples. You can just do it. And I think how they do it, I think if we scroll down, we scroll down, you can even write tests with this. So, you know, testing, you already did that, right? The proper tests. Um, you don't need, you can now stop doing that and still get the test and the test coverage, which is really cool. Um, you can also get alternatives. I will show you all that. What I really want to go to, oh, this is actually, this is actually cool too. So let me quickly show you this. This is actual code in JavaScript for using the um, Twitter API. So it says just, you know, const fetch tweet from user and boom, it will give you all this stuff to interact with the Twitter API. Um, draw a scatter plot. So it will just say const draw a scatter plot and boom, it will know all the stuff that it has to actually do. Um, you want to get a rating from Goodreads, which is, you know, a book rating website. Boom, here you go. There you got it. It knows that you're using HTTPS. It knows that you want to use all this stuff, get rating and boom, it will get the code for you. This is not exaggerated. This is how it works on my experience so far, which is not much, but I have a little experience and I will share that with you. Um, some other testimonies from other people, which is really cool, how it works. This is what I wanted to show you. So we got the OpenAI Codex model because, you know, AI, so this is trained by a model and it's probably, you know, you got the entire GitHub repos, the entire GitHub open source world at your feet. So this is probably gone into a model and it's training and it's training and it's training also now with all the users that are coming in with the technical preview, changing their code, making some edits, and it will learn from that what you want to do. See here, it says public code and text on the internet. Internet. So it's not even limited to GitHub, probably. I don't know. It's awesome. GitHub, GitHub Copilot service. Of course, they have something running in the cloud that's powering this. Um, then you provide it with the editor context. It provides a suggestion and you send the data back and that will improve that suggestion. Now, of course, there's frequently asked questions here uh, with the availability. When is it going to be? Can I use it with something other than Visual Studio Code? Not right now. Uh, will there be a paid version? It, there, it might be some paid tier whenever this pilot is going to end. Ha, pilot, co-pilot. Uh -huh. um, 
So, you know, you need to take that into account. Um, and also general, um, how good is it? It's not going to write perfect code. I think that's the other thing. Will it write perfect code? Definitely not. Um, and how good is it? So for a set of Python functions, uh, we blanked out the function bodies and asked GitHub Copilot to fill them. The model got it right in 43% of the times at the first try and 75% of the times when allowed 10 attempts. So that is, you know, half and half, but still pretty good. Um, but if you are seriously worried about this taking over your job, it's not going to happen just yet, as you can see right here. Um, now, the other thing, of course, and I think they address it in, in some of the other questions here is um, what is really interesting is um, where does this code come from? Um, and it says this code is synthesized. So it's not just taking code from everywhere and just pasting that in. Um, so it is kind of code that is kind of unique, uh, but it is of course, you know, very interesting, like where does the intellectual property lie and uh, how are we going to do this with licensing? Because who actually wrote this code? It's a bot, it's AI, is it you? Um, so that's kind of kind of an interesting thing, right? Well, a lot of questions are here. I think there's also an email address in there, a Twitter account that you can reach out to for all your questions and concerns that you might have. So please do that if that is something you have. Don't fly solo, sign up for the technical preview. Let's just fly over to Visual Studio Code and check out what this can do. So boom, here we are in Visual Studio Code. Now I've got the extension already set up. So let's go to extensions and I got GitHub Code Pilot. You can see it down here. Um, so if you go here, you can install this, but it has this big note that you have to be, uh, you have to have access. If not, you can install this, but it's not going to work. So you don't even have to try, uh, but you know, you can install it just to be sure. And then whenever you get access, then you can start going with it right away. But I've got it set up. It's installed. You will see the very little, um, oh, it's just beneath my camera right here. Um, the, the copilot icon in the status bar. So that is where you can enable it or disable it. Um, so that is really cool. Um, so let me just close this, go back here, open a folder and actually create a new folder here on my desktop. And I'm going to name this copilot. There we go. Create and open this one. So now I got a blank folder. Yes, I trust all these things. Uh, so just a blank folder, no files in here. So what I can do actually, uh, because it also knows kind of like the context, right, of what you're trying to do. So if I bring up a terminal here, which is something that I should be able to do, terminal, new terminal, there we go. And it gives me here and I can say .net new web app, just give me a simple web app to work with done a new web app, boom, there we go. And I can actually run this, but I'm not going to because you know, it's actually not that interesting. It's all about the code. Um, so I got a new web app, right? So I just got a couple of pages, which is CS, HTML and CS files, um, pure CS files. And I even got some JavaScript in here, CSS, all these things to play with. So that's really cool. But actually, let me just um, create a, a new file. Um, what I am going to do is here down at the bottom, let me get myself a little bit out of the way here. So here down at the bottom, you can choose what type this uh, file is going to be. So let's make this JavaScript. There we go. Um, so let's start with a little bit of JavaScript first, because that's what it's good at, right? And I tried this out, of course, to prepare a little demo, but this is really cool. So if I just start with comments here, and I say select all the buttons, uh, and you can see it already even gives me suggestions for like the comments here, and then press delete key, no, um, then give them a three pixel blue border and apply the class GitHub co, co pilot oops, to it. And now we can just say function and we wait a little bit and boom, there we go. It says on load. So it's going to do this on load. I mean, you can do this. Um, um, you can do this do magic. There we go. And it will just suggest the whole function for us. You can see it buttons. It will get the buttons document, get elements by tag name button for each. It's going to loop through the button. It's going to give me a three pixel solid blue border and it's going to add the class name and I can just do press tab here and boom, I got this function. That's pretty amazing, right? And I can also do the other way around. I can say function select all entries. Let's see what that does. 
and it's going to get all the entries. So it's going to get elements by tag name entry. Um, and it's going to apply the class name GitHub Copilot. So again, it, it stays kind of in the same context. It also knows what you're trying to do overall. Uh, so it's again going to apply this class name. So maybe I wasn't specific enough, fair enough. Um, and if I select like option, and it's probably going to be control or alt on Windows, and then um, you know you have these keys, and I can go through different suggestions here. So I can also do the background color. It will do something with the background color, apparently. And I think if I hover over here, you can also see like what options we have here next previous. Um, accept is what I just did with the tab key. Or you can say open copilot. And whenever I do that, um, you will get like this copilot view with um, 10 solutions, uh, 10 different solutions to this problem, to the thing that you asked. Um, and you can, well, actually, this is not 10, so that's interesting, but it will get at most 10. Um, and you can say, okay, I want this solution, boom, accept, and it will fill that in for you. So that is pretty cool. But like I said, I want to show you this in um, a C sharp context. So let's don't save this. Um, so let's go to our pages and actually, well, actually, let's add something here. Can I add a new file? There we go. Let's name this person.cs. It will know that it's a C sharp class. And I can say public class person. And it wants to make this a page. Well, I don't want to make it a page. So let's do this. And it's going to suggest me these um, uh, properties public string name. Well, that makes sense. Okay, name. What else? What else do we got? Age. Okay, maybe we want to have the age. That's good. And that's all it has for me right now. So maybe I can do still uh, public, well, public person. There we go. It suggests me to have a constructor. Um, but maybe I want to have the string, string name int age you can see boom it, it sees that I want to do the name and the age. Okay, let's do that. Opening bracket name is name age is age, there we go. And we have our constructor done. We have basically our whole person class in here. Now what else do we got? Okay, I just do enters and it suggests me the public override string to string. So let's do that. What are you going to do with that? Return name is age years old. Okay, it's going to say name is age years old. It's going to basically write out what you want to do in a two string on a person. Uh, what, what are our other options do we have here? Uh, with with or without a dot. So that's a very minimal change. Uh, okay, that's all it has for me apparently right now. Do we have anything else? No. Okay. Um, so let's go here. How can I get my suggestion? Okay, let's do that. That's fine. Um, so this is this is this is pretty amazing, right? I wrote this whole person um, object without writing any code basically. Um, so let's save that then I'm going to create a um, page maybe that's going to be interesting. Well, let's just copy this kind of index thing. Let's see what's going on here. I want to copy this, paste this, and it's going to create the copy here. Um, let's name this person and this one also person.cshtml. There we go. So now I need to rename something. Actually, let's so look at this for a little moment. So this does index model page model, right? It gives me the logger, it gives me the index model, it assigns that logger and it does the on get. So now just let's throw this away. I got what I wanted from this. Um, and I'm going to say here, boom, I didn't do anything public class person model page model. Okay. Now let's see what happens. I logger person model. Okay. What else? Do we have anything else person model? Yes. It's going to recreate this whole class that I just threw away basically here on get. Okay, that's that's all we get, right? Um, so that is pretty nice. What happens if I want to say public person? No, not the person, just the person um, model. Okay. Um, so this just gives me that. Okay, okay. Well, anyway, it still gives me a lot of stuff here, right? Um, and the really cool thing is person. So if I go here to this HTML, of course, I want to hear the person. Um, mo no, yeah, the person model, that's correct. Um, and now so I don't really know anything useful here. But here you can see it also starts suggesting me things. I don't know how um, interesting it will be for HTML at this point. But you know, it still suggests me some things. So that is pretty cool row. Um, but you know, maybe maybe you can come up with some more useful things here. Um, so that's cool. But this is just you know, okay, the boilerplate code, which is nice. Uh, well, let's go back to well, actually, let's create a new one here and set this 
to a C sharp file. There we go. Public class. Okay, and you know the fizz buzz, right? So that is kind of like uh, it's very uh, popular on tests where you have to divide by a certain number and it will write fizz or buzz or both. Um, so and it can write this whole thing basically for you. Um, so here it's going to create a console application. It's going to see main. It's going to get the number from the console read line. Okay, what else are we going to do? And then it's going to say for um, whatever there is in that number, it's going to write the loop. And it's going line by line here. I don't know why we're not getting like the full body um, in one go. Uh, maybe, you know, we can do that if we go here, maybe to the open copilot. It's synthesizing, well, 10 from 10. I'm just getting one because probably because I already have. Um, you know, a good portion of this code going on right here. Um, so maybe if I remove this, um, then I need to stop this and do this again. Synthesizing solutions. There we go. So now we got a couple of different ones, actually two. Um, I'm not sure why I don't have the button now to say accept solution, but I can still, you know, um, copy this over here probably, and it will give me the actual thing. Um, so there we go. So there we have that. Um, or we can say, you know, remove this and we can say public class math helpers. I don't know. Let's make it something like that. Let's see what's come up with. It's going to present me a factorial method. All right. If n is zero and it will again write me this whole thing. Um, or maybe I want to do something myself public static um, add numbers, right? And here we go. It suggests me two parameters and is going to return a plus b. Uh, maybe public int well, static static int give me a random number above above zero above um, a given number. Does it understand that? In min, in max, well, that's kind of what we want, right? We can select a min and a max, and it will give me the um, suggestion for that as well. So I'm kind of running out of <laughs> creative examples here, but if there's things that you want to see, please let me know down in the comments below. Um, I hope you got a sense from how this is actually working. Actually, there was one thing that I still wanted to try. Um, if we go into this www root and we go to CSS, um, What's going on here? Can we also say like select all links and make them red, right? Okay, over red, there we go. So, you know, else you might, at least for me, if I have to write CSS, I kind of know how it works, but I have to go out to Google, I have to go search it. Now I can write in human readable code, select all links. I even made a typo here. I forgot the L here um, and make them red. So and I can be more specific, like do not do it on Hoover or do it on Hoover, whatever. But this kind of, you know, gets you a long way without ever having to leave the browser and um, it will give you all the stuff right here. For We've now seen CSS, JavaScript, um, C sharp, uh, CS HTML, so kind of the C sharp script kind of stuff. Um, so this is pretty amazing if you ask me. So, well, that was a powerful demo, I think. Stay. Um, so are you impressed as, as impressed as I am? Because uh, this really blows my mind. And maybe it's more impressive if you actually play with it yourself. Um, but you know, um, it, it, maybe you can sign up for the beta for the technical preview, and maybe you will be on that list high up um, as soon as I am. Um, like I said, please let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. Um, because I ran out of creative samples, but I'm happy to, you know, if you have some interesting use case that we didn't look into yet, um, I've heard some suggestions about XAML, so that might be good to look into. Uh, but I think, you know, with these kinds of languages, it will just go out in its model, see what it came up with, um, like from the big bad interwebs and GitHub repository. So it might be able to suggest even something, um, but I will definitely be trying that out. Um, thank you for watching. Please like this video if you've actually liked it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. YouTube, please subscribe and I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.